what are the kingdom mysteries what are the keys please i beseech you in the name of jesus i can go down my knees for you if you want me to to listen and pay attention to what i'm telling you because for some of you this will be the lifeline it will be literally the lifeline between now and the the continuity of your effective living please pay attention this is more than a sermon tonight's message is an instrument of deliverance that god is bringing to you and for those following online i want you to pay attention you may need to call somebody and say connect now you are about to hear something and receive an impartation do you know that there are people scheduled to die every week right now is sunday there are people based in the realm of the spirit they are already dead by saturday you will see that you found your way here or you have connected yourself here by the privilege of god's grace i announce to you again that plot is destroyed forever All right, let's write when we say I shall not die it is beyond just mere speaking it takes more than a wish there are kingdom keys that have been allotted for the saints remember that victory in this kingdom is light dependent are we together key number one are you ready the first key based on the Word of God that guarantees longevity is submitting to Jesus who is the resurrection and the life Write it down, please. The first key that guarantees longevity is submitting to Jesus, who the Bible calls the resurrection and the life. Your encounter with the resurrection and the life is your surest guarantee. The resurrection and the life. In John 4 and verse 16, Jesus said, John 4, 16, please give it to us. My apologies, John 11, John 11, from verse 25 to 26, John 11. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. I am and the life. He that believe in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. 26. And whosoever liveth and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? It's up to you to answer. Are we together? So you must submit. It is a risk to know that Satan is determined to cut short your life if allowed and then not submit genuinely to the resurrection and the life when you are sick medically speaking you don't run to a carpenter for help is that true you don't run to a carpentry shop you run to a pharmacist or to a hospital the one who addresses your situation Jesus did not just call himself the way the truth and the life Jesus did not just call himself the apostle of our faith Jesus did not just call himself the high priest in this regard he calls himself the resurrection and the life so your first key to walking in longevity biblically is submitting to Jesus the resurrection and the life number two very quickly is someone learning the second biblical key that is responsible for the longevity of the saints that gives you immunity and victory over untimely death is the fear of the Lord the fear of the Lord the spirit of reverence please write it down the fear of the Lord Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 27 Proverbs 10 27 the Bible says the fear of the Lord prolonged days look at it the fear of the Lord prolonged days but the years of the wicked shall be shortened is that in your Bible the fear of the Lord what does it mean to fear God it means to honor him it means to refer him it means to respect him and the clearest proof of the fear of the Lord is obedience the fear of the Lord prolonged days Proverbs chapter 9 let's look at 10 and 11 Proverbs 9, 10, and 11. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. 11. It says, for by me, the fear of the Lord now, thy days shall be multiplied and the years of thy life shall be increased. Shout a loud amen. Yeah. I declare that the baptism of the fear of the Lord will rest upon your heart tonight. Yeah. Hallelujah. In Proverbs chapter 3, from verse 1 and 2, Proverbs chapter 3, we're examining the second key. Please do not forget what I'm teaching you. Number one, submitting to the authority and the logic of Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life. Now number two, the fear of the Lord. It says, my son, forget not my law, but let your heart keep my commands. Verse 2, it says, for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Verse 3, or oh, well, just one and two, that's fine. 
length of days and peace shall they add to thee in first kings chapter 3 first kings chapter 3 let's read verse 14 this was solomon's encounter with the god of the bible in a dream it says first kings 3 14 and if thou will walk in my ways and keep my statutes and my commandments as thy father david did walk then i will lengthen your days so longevity is not just the issue of claiming there is a way that you fear the Lord determined to obey him that no devil will cut short your life before your time. Number three, because I want us to pray tonight. Are you ready? The third key that the Bible teaches is the power of scripture-based confession. The power of scripture-based confession. You want to drive untimely death far from you? There is a role that your mouth and your speaking has to play. Psalms 34 from verse 12 down to 14. Please give it to us. Psalms 34, 12 to 14. He said, what man, Apostle Peter repeated this now in the New Testament. What man is he that desired life and loveth many days that he may see good? It's a question. Who is the person who is interested in having long life and many days? What's the condition? 13. He says, keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking deceit or guile. He, he tells you that every time you speak, your words have an implication on your longevity or otherwise. Now, most people think it does not matter. There are negative words. This is not about some Pentecostalism. There is a, there is a kingdom way that we speak, even from a medical standpoint. There, you begin to speak negatively, negatively about your life and about others. You are on your way to your grave early. And it should not be so. Hallelujah. Ah, I don't die. Nigeria. The realm of the spirit does not care whether you are joking. It records it and it becomes a tool for execution. Hallelujah. There are some things you should not say about yourself. No. No, it's not about being a baby Christian or being mature. This is the modus operandi of the kingdom. If you desire to walk in longevity, to walk in the fullness of the days ordained for you, your speaking matters. Hallelujah. Is someone already learning? Speakings. Proverbs 18.21, popular scripture. 18.21, Proverbs. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. What is the fruit of of death i mean death and life are both fruits and it's interesting that the same tongue can produce any one of them in the name of jesus this is the day the lord has made i declare that i rejoice in it and i am glad hallelujah i enjoy longevity and health not longevity and pain in the name of jesus long life is my portion in christ and i decree and declare it says knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou establish the dominion in the earth thereof you don't speak death speak negative things you know i was watching i was having a meeting with the leaders i think a week or two ago and then um the convention kenneth kenneth copeland's convention was was ongoing and i was just looking at that man in his 80s and he was standing unassisted i remember many many years ago he would speak literally over the various parts of his body with childlike faith and many people who were bragging and said there's nothing they've long gone and this man is still standing only fools bishop oedipo would say doubt proof be careful when people arrogantly downplay the principles of the kingdom. They will not guarantee you when tragedy strikes. The Bible says, follow them who through faith and patience. By the privilege of God's grace, I've had the honor of meeting a few old people, some of the oldest fathers of faith in this nation. Hallelujah. Yes. And every time I have an opportunity to talk to them, I usually would ask them the secret. Please, daddy or whoever, please, what can you share with me if there is one key to long life? What would it be? And in most cases, among the things that they share, it will be about speaking well, speaking well, speaking correctly. Hallelujah. This is more than positive confession. This is not just psychology, although that is profitable in itself. But we are talking of a scripture-based confession. You are declaring to create. You are declaring to maintain. Are we together now? Words are so powerful that Jesus himself calls himself the word, the logos of God. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. That's my confession. I truly believe it. That I shall not die, 
believe and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. Sing it one more time from your heart. I shall not die, believe and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. So from tonight, Koinonia, hear me. Teach your children. Husband, change your confession. Wife, change your confession. Parents, change your confession. Children, man of God, leaders, start speaking to be consistent with the word of God. In the name of Jesus, I am blessed. I decree and declare that the life of God flows through me. I decree and declare that length of days is my portion in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Many, many people made noise. They laughed at those confessing the word. Some of those people are not alive today. And some of the people with childlike faith who kept speaking after many decades, they are still standing. Ah. Though we are few, we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. And this is the song we'll be singing forever. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Please hear me, ladies and gentlemen. I want to tell you that words matter. Words matter. The first fall and destruction of a man came because of something he heard. When man fell, the Lord came to the garden and said, Adam, where are thou? He said, I heard your voice, but I hid because I was naked. And he said, who told you? You expose your ears to something and to someone. And in addition to speaking, manage the things that get into your eye and your ear gate. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. These are not elementary spiritual things at all. Most of you authorize demons to begin to afflict you because you expose yourself to content that you were not supposed to expose your mind to. Hallelujah. Be careful from reading all kinds of nonsense magic books there are people today and let me say it especially to younger people who are in ministry let your search for revelation not lead you to demonic things where you go and encounter all kinds of spirits books of the dead because you are trying to access realms 15 dimensions of consciousness and you start reading those things until you find yourself there you come back with all kinds of familiar spirits sufficient for your growth and your excelling is the truth that is contained in scripture the bible says many listen it says many miracles did jesus in the presence of his disciples that were not recorded in this book give it to us john 20 please the last verse that would be verse what now verse the last please look for it for us john 20 the last verse i want to show you that scripture it says many miracles that jesus did john chapter 20 and many verse 30 thank you many other signs truly did jesus in the presence of his disciples which were not written in this book next verse please 31 it says but these are written that ye might believe that jesus is the christ the son of god and that believing ye might have life through his name so it is true that it is not everything that happened that was recorded in scripture but by the intelligence of the spirit the scripture as contained in this already has with the breath of the spirit the leadership of the spirit can supply you every kind of growth you seek it doesn't mean that extra biblical materials concordances and all of the rest are bad but you must be guided there are many believers who have not been guided and they started reading all kinds of books books that start teaching you about consciousness and start exposing you you start exposing some of those things they are saying are not lies but they are very deep spiritual things it takes a level of stability in the spirit and conviction to dare those materials because they sustain the power to sway you be careful in a bid to look for a salmon, many of us have traveled into hellfire to go and get messages there and you never return again because you got there in a search for mysteries and, and people return with all kinds of things. May we be grounded and established in the truth in the name of Jesus Christ. In America today, there are many young children who are already demonized because of being exposed to several materials. Unfortunately, there are many institutions that teach some of these courses and even recommend them to children. And they open up themselves and you find children asking parents questions that they cannot answer. Parents, may God grant us grace. Hear me. May God grant grace to know where to send your child to. Just because the school fees is much does not mean it is a good school. There are many, many schools that you can pay whatever million and with it you are paying the money for your child's death. We need to manage it because sometimes in a bid to justify the amount of money that was spent, people introduce all kinds of programs. They bring all kinds, respectfully speaking, this is, these are my opinions based on scripture. 
all kinds of therapies and psychologists and some of these people don't fear God and they start asking the children questions until, until something happens to your children that you do not understand. Somebody shout God forbid. prophetic declarations that are consistent with scripture prophetic declarations that are consistent with scripture hallelujah number four what is the fourth biblical key that controls longevity are you ready honor to parents honor to parents honor to parents both physical and spiritual honor to parents Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 1 to 3. Please give it to us. Honor to parents, the fourth key now. Children, it says, obey your parents in the Lord. Please take note of the expression in the Lord. It didn't say, children, obey your parents anyhow, whatever they say. Mm -mm. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. That means the parents are not the final say. The word of God is final say. I need to say this. I am an advocate of honor, but we need to be careful because many people have been derailed because of this scripture and because it was misunderstood obey your parents in the lord for this is right verse 2 it says honor your father and your mother which is the first commandment with promise verse 3 that it may be well with thee and that thou mightest live long upon the earth please look up the spirit of rebellion the spirit of dishonor will always cut short the life of the victim unfortunately our generation except god helps us corporately we're beginning to embrace dishonor it's beginning to be fashionable people say it doesn't matter it's my life but you see there are laws i pray that dishonor will not make our generation cost because of the ill speakings that come from the pain of parents hallelujah there are many many people today that it is not well with them because they have secured the causes and the ill speakings of parents and let me tell you when it has to do with parents bar whether they are born again or not by reason of being parents or being in a position of parents there is authority that was given to them they can speak and the realm of the spirit will obey and let me declare over someone if either by your mistake or maybe your past or not having any knowledge you have secured the cause or the ill speaking of any parent any father any mother physically or spiritually by the mystery of the blood and the mercy of god that statement is cancelled right now <laughs> hallelujah now i must bring a disclaimer we men of God like scriptures like this, unfortunately, because it has been a useful tool for manipulation through the years. There is a balance to this. It does not mean just because people are asked to honor leaders, spiritual leaders especially, it does not mean that people should remove their brains and throw away and become children and become fools. No, there is intelligence in our faith work. Are we together now? Yes. So there is a balance. However, honor still remains a potent spiritual law that is responsible for longevity. Honor your father and your mother. Some of you, by this teaching, you may need to call, even if it's your physical parents, and just tell them, listen, I'm sorry. The other day I shouted and insulted you and said, go to hell. It's just my foolishness. Accept that I'm just a child. I came for koinonia, and God used apostle to drum sense into my head, mama, I am sorry. I desire to live long. And some of these are little children who insult everybody based on the movie, hold their hands, tap it two or three times, and sit them down, show them a scripture, and say, listen, young man, if you want to live long, do not make it marketable to insult everybody. Don't say it's just a little boy. The Bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction will drive it far from him. Not the rod of wickedness, the rod of correction. Hallelujah. Is someone learning? Honor. Honor to parents. Honor to fathers. When God plants you within a ministry, honor the authority structure that he has put there. Are we together? This spirit of rebellion that many have carried has, has become their unbecoming. You continue to spell destruction for yourself. It ought not to be so. There is a way that the kingdom operates. If we're together, say amen. amen. Honor to parents. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 20. Proverbs 20, 20. In fact, when we read it, let's see how we can try NIV. The Bible says, Who so cursed his father or his mother. Listen carefully. He said, His lamb shall be put out in obscure darkness. Let me tell you how it works in the spirit. If a father fights his son, he loses his honor. If a son fights his father, he loses his life. There are allocations to these offenses in the spirit. You see that? Yes. Same scripture, 20, 20. If a man causes his father or mother, he says his lamp will be snuffed out in pitch darkness. This is true. There are many, many people who have put themselves in this unfortunate condition, physically and spiritually across the globe because of lack of intelligence. And remember, you can do nothing against the truth. 
but for the truth. 